Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm thankful to have this opportunity to talk to you. Um, I hope you guys can be challenged by um, God's word this morning. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to be talking about something that is essential to our Christian faith. Um, and I've like almost, I very rarely have heard it talked about. And it's a very large topic. Um, but I'm going to try and point out some things that we have to be doing as we live. Um, but first, I'm going to start out with a little bit of a story about me from my middle school life. So I forget exactly what year it was in middle school, but I really struggled in my faith. So I believed in the Lord, I believed that he died for my sins, and I would go to a church on Sundays, I would confess my sin, but I did it like just to be good with God. It was almost like a get out of hell card. I wasn't trying to confess sin or change the way I live because I loved the Lord, rather just to get out of hell. Um, and when I lived this way, it, like, it robbed me of all the peace and joy that come as a follower of Christ. Fear kind of like took over my life at, at times, and I was just thinking, throughout school days, I would be like, it would be on my mind, like, am I going to heaven? Am I going to hell? That's about all I, that was constantly on my mind. I cared about it so much. And as I said, it robbed me of the peace and the joy that I had. It got to the point where one night I was lying in bed and I was just so scared about this that I just, I went to my dad and I said, can we talk? So for me in my life in middle school, I believed in the Lord, but it didn't affect the way I lived. Nothing really changed in my life. See, with, with me in middle school, part of the root of this problem was the motive for why I was living I didn't take sin as seriously as I should have, and in addition, I wasn't actively pursuing the Lord, going to his word, going to prayer, to grow in the likeness of him. See, as Christians, we aren't just to accept the gospel and believe in him. Our whole lives should change as a result. And in addition, we're called to be holy. Um, in our world, we're... We live, we live in a world where the morality is going down and it's getting darker and darker. And we can't conform to the world, but we can't conform to the world and we also can't just completely separate ourselves from the world. So we have to know how to live. Um, and as Mr. Bennett just mentioned this morning, the theme this year is to be a light. If we pursue holiness and make that a goal in our lives, we will be different and we will be in a light in our world. Um, so if you guys want to open your Bibles and turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 14 to 16, that is where I'm going to briefly start. So it says, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy you also be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. So this is the call for believers. It goes back to the Old Testament in Leviticus, but it is a call to holiness. And now, some of you guys might be wondering, what is holiness? It is simply, say, simply said, it is separating from our old self, and it has a lot to do with our sanctification and becoming our new self after Christ. And in a, on a, more comp, deep, a little bit deeper, it's having our thoughts and desires um, align with God's and loving what God loves and hating what he hates. Um, holiness is found in an intimate connection with God, a close relationship with him, but sin breaks that relationship. And at its root, we sin and we do what we want instead of what God wants. So then the question becomes, what do we do? We want to be holy, we want to strive after this, but we sin again and again and again. So from there, um, now if you guys would turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. So here, 
Paul is talking and he says, Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. So in this context, Paul just talked about certain promises that God has given in the Old Testament. And then he wants the people of Corinth to separate themselves from their past and give themselves completely to God. And he says, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit. And this is one of the first things that is essential for us to do as believers as we pursue holiness. See, a defilement is something that makes us unclean or impure, and this is sin. And then he says, in contrast, that we should cleanse ourselves and strive to be pure. So we have to do this on the inside, in our hearts, and on the outside. If we do it just on the outside, we'll be like the Pharisees. They commanded others to follow God's law, but they didn't do it themselves, and then they were hypocrites. Um, in Jeremiah 17, 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? See, this is one of the big ways that we will sin, in our hearts. Our hearts are deceitful, and we often don't realize how much we sin in our thoughts and motives, um, we can do things out of selfishness. We can do things out of pride. We can covet. We can be jealous. We could do something really good, but yet if we're doing it with the wrong motive, it's sin. And Jesus talks about this in Matthew 6 when he says to be careful of practicing your righteousness before others to be seen by them. Like when you're giving to the poor, don't make loud noise or like call a trumpet to draw attention to yourself. Just do it in secret and your father will see it. So we have to watch our motives and our inward hearts because we sin so much more than we realize. And as Christians, when Christ died for our sins, we can't continue to walk in it, but we should strive to walk in obedience to him and his word. See, we need to take sin seriously. I can often forget how much God hates sin. He is a holy God who is righteous and perfect and knows what is infinitely true. Um, but part of the issue is, I know in my life before, I've developed the attitude of, oh, it's not that bad, even though I know it's wrong. And then I continue doing it, and I don't turn away from it. On top of that, as we continue in sin, it affects everything. It, if, if we go and get worse and worse and keep pushing the boundaries, it can grow, and then it will affect others more and more. And God, see, the punishment for sin is death, for the wages of sin is death. That helps show the seriousness of sin. So in our lives, we have to take this seriously. We can't, when we see sin, we have to cleanse ourselves from it, strive to get rid of it. We can't just be okay with it and let it continue to reign in our bodies. Um, see, but one of the amazing things is, as believers in Christ, we do have power over sin. In Romans 6, verses, Romans chapter 6, verses 6 and 7, Paul says, we know, we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin, for one who has died has been set free from sin. So our old self before Christ was broken on the cross with him. So sin no longer has power and dominion over it. And we're no, no longer slaves to it, so we can say no to it. See, as we pursue holiness, this is the first thing I want you guys to realize, that we have to take sin seriously. We have to strive to cleanse ourselves of it and get rid of it as we have the power to do so as we believe in Christ. The thing is, that's often very difficult. Um, we might be wrapped up in the same sin over and over again, and we just struggle to break that habit. And with that, I would tell you guys, don't be discouraged. Satan will try and wrap you up in guilt and shame and make you feel like you can't overcome it. But the thing is, we can. Um, God gives us a helper, the Holy Spirit. We're not alone in our faith. And as we pursue holiness, we need the Holy Spirit. Um, he will help get us help us get away from sin and grow in Christ-likeness. Um, so now, one of the second important things we have to do as we pursue holiness um, is going to come from Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17, if you guys would turn there. Paul 
Paul says here, but I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. These, for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. So what is walking by the Spirit? It's following behind Him and His leading and guidance. Part of it is submitting to Him. So as the Holy Spirit works in our lives and He convicts us of sin, we can't ignore that, and we have to confess it and get rid of it. See, this is difficult, though, as I just talked about how much we sin, so the desires of my flesh and what I want to do are often going to be opposite of God. I do not naturally want to please God, but by walking by the Spirit, allowing Him to work in my life, listening to Him, then my life will slowly start to transform and get away from the desires of the flesh, and He will transform me to be more like Christ. Um, a quote from C.S. Lewis helped me understand the importance of the Holy Spirit, um, he said, in many of us, the spirit is resident but not ruling. We do not submit and yield to his rule in our lives, to his guidance and direction in our daily attitudes and behaviors. I'll read it again. In many of us, the spirit is resident but not ruling. We do not submit and yield to his rule in our lives, to his guidance and direction in our daily attitudes and behaviors. I think we can often forget about the importance of the Holy Spirit as God has given him to us. Um, as C.S. Lewis said, we have to submit to him and let him guide our daily attitudes, the way we think and the way we feel. And this is something that is so crucial for us as believers. As God works in our life and he calls us to do something, as I said again, as I said previously, and I'm going to say again, we can't ignore that. And as we walk by the Spirit, we won't, able, we won't only be able to fight sin and go away from sin, but we'll be able to grow more in Christ-likeness. Because if you continue reading, the Spirit doesn't only, the Spirit will help. See, it, in verse 22, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. It goes on to say how, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against such things there is no law. So as we're walking by the Spirit, not only will we be able to say no to sin and, res and get away from the desires of the flesh, but we will become more like Christ as we have love, joy, peace, and self-control. So as we pursue holiness and we separate from our old self and become more like our new self, we have to be walking with the Spirit and submitting to Him as He will help us get away from the old and become more like the new. The last main point that I'm going to talk about as we pursue holiness is the importance of being in God's word. We strive to cleanse ourselves from sin as we see it in our lives. We try to get rid of it. And then we walk by the spirit and we follow him and submit to him and listen to him. In John 17, 17, Jesus says, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. See, we can grow in holiness by looking to God's word and letting it shape the way we live. In addition, I want to go to Romans 12, 1 to 2, if you guys would turn there in your Bibles. Juniors and seniors, we've talked about this verse a lot in Bible class, and it is extremely important as believers, and seniors, you specifically, I feel like I've mentioned this verse, or you've heard this verse like a thousand times because you've heard me speak for like three years, but it is so important and, cru and crucial for us as believers. Paul says here, I appeal to you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So in the first part of that, we have to realize that we have to surrender everything to God and be willing to do anything for him, including when he calls us to give up sin, we strive to give it up and walk in obedience. And then on top of that, then Paul says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. The world, our world has such a strong influence on us. Whether you're watching TV in the shows, in the ads, 
whether you're looking at billboards, whether you're listening to music, even in politics. Um, there are so many ways that the world influences us. And if we're not, we have to renew our mind in God's word and fill our minds with the truth. If we don't do this, multiple problems can arise. For me personally, when I'm not walking in God's word, renewing my mind, looking to it, to discern how I should live and what I should be proving, approving that aligns with God's will in my life, it is easier for me to sin. It is easier for me to stumble. As I'm supposed to be get, getting away from sin, if I refuse to go to God's word and be in the truth, then I'm going back towards my old self. In addition, it concerns me as, like, we look at our nation, there are churches that fall away from the truth of God's word, and they believe things that are completely contrary to the Bible. And on top of that, how many people, they, in our nation, I, like, you hear about people that grow up in Christian homes, and then they think that the things of this world will satisfy, and they leave the faith. Part of the issue there is they're not conforming their mind and their life to God's word. And so then the world has a greater influence on them, and they fall away from the truth. And some of you guys might be wondering, like, Nate, how can you say that? And that's true. Like, I have to be slow to speak in me saying that, but here's the thing. I sin too, and I, I can fall. That's why every day I have to be looking to God and asking him, I'm not as good as this as I should be, but looking to him and asking him to sustain me in my faith because I realize the things of this world have such a great influence, and if I'm not careful and I don't watch the way I'm living, then I'll be the one to fall and go away from the truth and fall away from the faith. So this is the third thing I want to point out. As we pursue holiness, separate from our old self, become like our new self, conform your mind and the life and your life and the way you live to God's word. So at this point, I have told you three things. Cleanse yourself from sin. Strive to get rid of it. Remember that God hates sin and we will sin in tiny little ways we don't even realize. And then walk by the Spirit Submit to him and his guidance, and we won't gratify the desires of the flesh. And now, to conform your life to God's word. So some of you guys might be wondering, why should I do this? Just why? Like, what's, what's the purpose? Well, first off, I read the verse from 1 Peter. We're commanded to, you shall be holy as I am holy. On top of that, when we become Christians, it's important that we don't just become lazy and complacent in our faith. It's not, oh, I believe in God, so now I can live however I want. Back when I was in middle school, I, I might have said this earlier, but I'm going to repeat it. I didn't, I believed in God, but then I continued to kind of live how I want. I wasn't actively pursuing the Lord, growing in my, striving to grow in my faith, and striving to put away my old self and my sinful desires. And it, finally, holiness will bring true joy and assurance of salvation. See, sometimes when we sin, it'll bring pleasure, but it is so temporary and fleeting. If you guys would turn in your Bibles to Psalm 16, verse 11. says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. See, this verse kind of has two meanings. Ultimate fullness of joy will one day be found as we're in heaven when we have holiness and we're no longer um, battling sin. But on this earth, true fullness of joy will come as we're walking with God in his presence and living for him. Things of this world won't satisfy. As we continue, as we walk in God's word and pursue holiness, we want to get to a point where we delight God, in God's law and his word, and it's not just like a chore. So here's... 
I've talked about three things once again. Cleanse yourself from all sin, big or small. It's not just the big sins that God cares about. We sin in tiny little days every day that we have to look at our hearts and try and get rid of that. Walk with the Spirit, submit to Him as He convicts you of sin and as He guides you, listen to Him. And finally, conform your life to God's Word and let it transform the way you live. Now, I have to be very clear with something. I've talked about these three things, but I want you guys to realize that that doesn't mean that we're perfect. As we live on earth, we are going to continue to struggle. We fall short of God's glory. And God will forgive you. So I want you, that's something I need you guys to understand. That sin is super, super serious, but yet we're going to struggle, and that's when we can turn to God for forgiveness. So I've talked about a lot. Pursue holiness is the main goal. How, do we do, how can we do that? Ultimately, God's word talks a lot more about than what I just said on how to pursue holiness. But three things you can do. Cleanse yourself from sin, walk by the spirit, and conform your life to God's word. And the ultimate challenge I have for you, and I have to look at myself as well. As Christians, as believers, we have to take our faith seriously, and we have to let it change the way we live. Everything about us should change as we believe in Christ, as we pursue holiness, put away our old self, become the new self, pursue Christ and his likeness. Everything should change. Whether I'm playing basketball, whether I'm talking to friends, in my relationships, the way I interact with my parents, everything. The way I think, my thoughts, what I fill my mind with, everything has to change as we believe in Christ and pursue holiness. 1 Peter 1.14, you shall be holy as I am holy. I'll close in prayer. God, um, I thank you for High Point um, and the atmosphere that we have here, God, and how um, there are so many opportunities, Lord, to grow in our faith towards you. Um, help us as we live, God, to pursue holiness, to get away from our old self, Lord, to... Um, become more like you, and to love what you love and hate what you hate, God. Help us to get rid of sin in our lives and to walk by your spirit and submit to you. And help us not to be um, overcome by things of the world and um, to fill our mind with your word and um, just to become more like you, God. Um, help us be with us today, Lord, just as we um, finish out this Friday. Thank you for who you are to us and for dying on the cross for us. In your son's name I pray, amen.